good. These are the tools you're going to need. This is actually a felting pad. Um, we make these, uh, you can buy them in the store at Michael's. Um, some of them are foam. This happens to be a burlap bag that has um, rice in it. It's basically got some give, as you can see. This is a felting needle tool. Um, don't mind mine, it's kind of screwed up and broken, but um, the the point is you want a tool that will actually hold these felting needles. Um, and you can get these felting needles at Michael's. Let me see if I can get this in focus so you can see it. They're special because each needle has these little ridges in the needle. And what happens is as you are needle felting, those ridges catch the fibers and help lock them together. And that is why you need a specific needle. Um, I use the heavy weight needles because I want the fibers to be caught. Um, the loose doesn't do as well. To actually make the felt beads, we need a fiber. Um, it can be a roving, such as this. Uh, you have one similar to this. Or it can be locks. Now, these locks are a little different than um, the locks that I believe you have. This is a different wool. So these are going to have a different crimp. Um, I have some different... Uh, these are Winsleydale locks, and that'll give you an example of the difference. The crimp's different, um, the thickness is different, and let me pull one of these out so you can see. Length is going to be different, um, and that depends on the wools that we use. Um, in this case, I'm going to stick to using both of these. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use these smaller ones as accents, and I will show you what I mean by that. All right, to make a bead, you got to start with at least one lock if you're going to do the um, little tails on the end of the bead. If you're just going to do a plain simple bead, then you can start with just fluff. That's fine too. I'll do both so you can see. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to do two or three locks. One, everything that you felt is going to get smaller. Two, I want some accent colors in this. I don't want it to just be the pinks. Um, so these blues, what I'm basically going to do is use this as filler. If I want this lock to be what sh shows on my bead, I'm going to fold these in half and I am going to place them about there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this fiber up. I'm not being particular at this point. It's just roll it up and see what we can get. All right. I want roughly that much of that little, say I want that much tail out. That's what I'm going to needle fill. This, avoid your fingers. <laughs> but you push down and up. Down and up. And I'm doing this side. And then I pull it up off the mat because it's going to stick. And I turn it. And I do. Down and up. Now, keep in mind, everything that you felt is going to shrink because it's going to go all compact on you. So this big fluff is going to turn into a lot smaller ball. little fibers and knotting them up together. Now, I will tell you that 
The needles that I have in my little tool are fairly dull and that's why it's taking this so long. Um, if you change your needles out on a regular basis, then they'll still have those little barbs and it will be a little bit quicker job. Um, I have screwed mine up. It won't, it won't actually turn like it's supposed to, so I can't get the needles out of this little tool. So I'm going to have to buy a new tool. Um, and you can get those at Michael's, Hobby Lobby's. Um, I'm not sure if Joann's has them. And sometimes you can get lucky and find them at Walmart. Okay. Um, I want the blue showing. So I'm going to, what I'm basically doing here is I don't want any more of this pink. I want that blue showing. I'm going to lay that blue over top of that tail and I'm going to felt some. And that is exactly how you place your colors if you want a specific color somewhere. You're going to lay it over a spot and then felt a little bit. show you this um this is partially felted but I can still squeeze that a lot it's got a lot of give so that would actually come undone so we need to continue to felt it you want it fairly hard in the center um, obviously you want to make it not so hard that you can't get a needle through it or then it's not going to be a bead anymore but um, if it's too soft, what's going to happen is over time it will actually come apart. Okay, a trick I do is I roll it up because keeping that ball form when you're trying to needle felt something on a flat surface it's a little bit more difficult. Um, it helps if your felting pad has quite a bit of give because as you can see it makes like a little pocket as I'm felting. That helps keep that roundness. You've got a bead that it's not completely felted, um, as you can see, it still has a lot of give. Um, and you want something brighter there. You can take these other locks and you can actually wrap them in to add more dimension if you want to. This is a really long one. And all I'm going to do is to tack that over that. See? Yep. <laughs> Just stab myself.
actually like the roughness that you can see in this. Um, make sure you can actually see that bead. I actually think it's fun to show that much of the wool, but there is a needle felted little bead. All right, we're gonna set you off to the side. And now I'm gonna show you how to work with roving. Um, this is going to be similar to what you had. It is not the exact same roving. Um, so I'm not real sure if the staple length. Now, the staple length is the length of each fiber. This fiber is all brushed and combed together. So you're going to have lots of fiber lengths interlocked in this roving. Um, in order to find the staple length and to pull apart roving, you're not going to want to pull really close to the front because pulling close to the front chances are you've got a longer staple length than that direction at which point you may be holding on to the end of that piece of fiber so you get a little farther away and if you pull a staple length of fiber will be pulled out now that is the natural length of this fiber okay i am going to pull this out until I have a chunk that has some good heft. Um, I also want to make sure that I get some of this blue color. So if I want to skip all that red, I just pick a spot and pull. Make sure your hands are pretty far apart. That way you actually get um, enough length that you can pull it and not fight the fiber. All right, that ought to be enough. Okay, now this one. I'm actually going to pile all this fiber together and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna roll it up. Now, if you want more of one color showing, just shove it around and move it around until you find the colors that you like like okay i've got a spot, spot to start i'm holding that fiber and i'm gonna do the same thing i'm going to poke a little bit and you see how it's flattening it all i'm doing at this point is tacking it down all right and then i pull because i don't want it to connect to the bat and I turn. And it's gonna look like a lumpy mess for a little bit. It's okay. Because you are dealing with some very unruly fibers, but they will compact down. just that little ball with just this roving or if you want you can throw in a lock if you want to play with it um, you can felt in that entire lock you do not have to use it and leave any of it out
locks or any lock um, because it adds a bit of different texture and it adds a tiny bit of sheen. It's not a lot, but it's enough that it's it catches the light. <laughs> checking how soft how squishy it is I know that's a very technical term <laughs> and while I don't mind the texture of some of the locks and the wool being shown I still want to make sure that it's really tacked down I don't know if you can tell that but do you see how that part of the lock is really loose I don't want that to end up getting caught and pulled out. So I needle felt around it. It still leaves the color. But it tacks it down more and locks it into place. leaving a tail out or making it solid. Now the difference between needle felting and wet felting, the texture that you see on this bead is going to go away if you wet felt it. It is going to turn out to be a very smooth surface because you're basically taking water and soap and rubbing them together and all that texture is going to go away. Now you can't do um, the tails hanging out with wet felting because of the action of actually felting. So, but that is how it is done. I hope that helps you, sweetheart. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Okay, here's another little side note. Um, I'm actually going to show you, I'm going to do another bead that actually has a um, tail on it. I'm going to do more of the blues, but you don't have to have roving in order to do filler. You can also do what is called pull the um, lock apart. Obviously, when it's intact, it's a long, thin lock. Um, I'm going to show you, this was a lock. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly what I did in order to create that fluff and it sticks to everything. <laughs> okay. Here's a lock. Um, it's pretty deformed. It's got a lot of crimps in it. Uh, this would be one that I'd probably stick in water, uh, to help draw that down. If it wouldn't, it's going to turn into this, um, fluff because it's just, I wouldn't be using it. And you basically pull the edges of that lock. Do you see how I'm starting to pull it apart? You pull that apart. And you just continue to pull. And what that does is it's 
pulling the individual fibers apart, but then you have fluff. That fluff can then be used as your filler. And I actually think I'm gonna need some of that one because I'm not gonna have enough fiber. And it takes more fiber than you think it does when you start to do these um, little beads. You'll find that it's like you start with something that looks like, oh my goodness, that's gonna be a huge bead. And as you felt it, it breaks down and tightens up and all of a sudden, it's super duper tiny. You can start with smaller amounts and add on. Obviously, um, earlier in the video, I showed you how to add on accent colors. You can continue to add on extra um, fiber if you want your bead bigger. Be careful when you've done fluff like that um, out of a bead because it's going to be poofier than using a roving um, in the nature of tearing those fibers apart. Um, so you're going to want to tack it down and move it a lot more than you do with that roving because if I just continued to felt here, I'm going to end up with a flat spot that I can't ball up. And that is not our goal. example of a different lock this is what is called a tease water lock and I don't know if you remember but the other locks were a lot shorter tease water locks 
tend to be in the 11 to 12 inch range and um, these sheep are absolutely gorgeous when I send you this video I'll actually share a picture of the sheep with you they are beautiful um, these locks I tend to say for weaving as the fringe on the bottom um, because it is just a shame to ball this up um, to make a bead now you can um, nothing is going to stop you. That's up to you. Um, I adore these locks, so I tend to save them so that I can actually see the lock. I don't want to um, needle felt them to death. But I am going to add in an accent because this one is just too darn light. to find out if you've done enough especially on the surface is what's called a pinch test and here's an example 
this section right here is not going to be needle felted enough. Um, if I pinch that and you see how the fibers came up, that means you need to felt more. If you want those fibers stuck, um, if you don't, then you're done. Um, but I do. So I'm actually going to hold that and I am going to make it a point to needle felt right there. This bead is technically a little bit bigger than this one and that was because I added on fiber on the back end because I said it was too light um, but they all came from the same dye pot so they are all going to intermatch and coordinate so mm -hmm. 